Hello everyone. Today will be an overview of using the Epicor tracing options in Epicor 10. We will discuss the different selection options and suggest when to use each of these options. So let's take a look at user tracing options in Epicor 10. The next few slides will review each of these topics listed here on this slide. We'll show pictures of each of the main topics and then review further information about using and reading the trace log files. So we'll be discussing activating the tracing options from the Epicor menu, activating tracing options from user account maintenance, defining the tracing options selections criteria, and reviewing the trace log file. And then we'll talk about some tips about closing the system monitor and disabling tracing when you're done using the tool. You can activate the tracing options using the Epicor menu by clicking the settings tile. The settings tile is shown here and then once you get from the settings tile you'll be in the general operations area of the settings tile and you can select tracing options item to open the tracing options form. An alternate way is to use the tracing options item using the caret that will show the hidden icons from the Epicor main menu. If you have permissions the rightmost icon should be your selection for tracing options. You can hover over the icon to see if you have the correct one selected as shown. You can also activate tracing options from the user account maintenance. You use this option to activate the client log to run automatically each time this user logs in. A new log file is generated each time the user logs in and different log files will be generated for each workstation that the user logs into. Once enough information is gathered for troubleshooting, the tracing options should be turned off for the user account. Here you will check the Enable Trace Logging checkbox along with other options that will be discussed in the next slides. Note there is a default log directory schema and log directory. In this case the default was changed to a custom directory, but normally the path would start with C colon slash users. Notice there are a few options for the log directory scheme. The current log directory will have a different default option based on what is chosen for the scheme drop down box. For example the temporary files location, your app data location, etc. So actually defining the tracing option selections are covered in the next few slides. So you're going to check the Enable Tracing checkbox to get started with the tracing options. Any steps that are performed after the box is checked and the Apply or OK button is clicked are then recorded in the log file. You can record as long as you wish. Just remember to uncheck the box for Enable Tracing once you no longer wish to record steps. Business objects used and method calls performed will be recorded. Tracing is useful for web service developers to view the calls and for customizations to help troubleshoot logic and performance and for Epicor support to review performance. Down here you can see an example of the business object, the part business object, and then a method for the business object named update. Those would be included in your trace log file. Next here we highlight the write full data set. Check this box to write the full data set if you would like to see the data set being passed from the client to the server. Otherwise the data set contents will not be included in the trace log. The next option is the track changes only. Check this checkbox to see only changes made to the data set. Any columns that have changes made in the data set will be shown in the log instead of the full data set. Include server trace. This checkbox should be selected to include information from the server processing in the client log. This will show what server methods are called and impacts on the server performance. Use the performance tuning guide to gain additional information on using this option which explains how you can set up custom trace logs additionally and often this might be a checkbox that you would check if you needed to troubleshoot and work with Epicor 
for performance issues. Write call context data set. Check this box to write the call context, mostly if you want to troubleshoot business process management BPMs. When a user encounters a BPM form or a BPM directive, the call context data set information is available and is then recorded in the trace log. The next box to focus on is the write response data. You, you would want to check this checkbox to capture the data set replies. Often there can be method calls that are called and change data but are not written to the database and instead just returned to the client. This option is useful when developing for Service Connect workflows or C Sharp customizations when you need to see the before and after data set. The current log file will have a default value filled in or you can change this by using the browse button next to the current log file to save this file to another location. Once you click open apply or OK, the location will then become the default location for the log file for this client. Use the mark text box text field to enter in text that you would like to find more easily in the log output. Click the right button to use this option. All of the mark text portions will be grouped together in the log file. You will enter the text in the mark text box and then click the right button directly before the step or steps that you want to highlight and then directly after the step or steps and then search for the text in the log file or view it in the XML file. You can optionally also choose to output the log file as an XML file. You can manually enter a path or click the browse button next to the XML text box and choose a location for the XML file. Then click the Create XML button after you complete the tracing. This picture shows an example of an XML file tracing log. This is a trace of the part update trace. At the top you can see the data set here. The part data set includes all the different fields and then what was changed was the unit price and the net weight, the state is modified, and then what we modified them to. So now we'll take a quick look at reviewing the trace log file itself. The trace log file, when viewed with the view button, will look similar to this. And we'll show different sections, including the business object, which defines the processes run by Epicor. The part business object handles any processing done on the part record in the part table. And then the method name. Methods are actions performed by the business object. The get new method gets a new part record. The return type is going to usually be the data set or table set or void when the data set is passed through the input parameters. The local time will be shown as the time when the business object method trace was executed. The execution time will show how long the trace for the business object method took in milliseconds. The parameters between the starting tag of parameters and the ending tag of parameters are the input parameters for the business object method and should be in the order listed and the type shown. The yellow area shows the service trace and the data collected when the include server trace checkbox was checked. The UTC shows the date and time when the call to the server was was received. ACT shows the action, the business object and method. DUR shows the duration in milliseconds. CLI shows the client IP address. Users, the user logged in calling the server process. Machine will show the machine name if used in Epicor. And PID is the server process ID and TID is the thread ID used to handle the call to the server. Some tips to think about when using tracing options. You should close the system monitor. Closing the system monitor is suggested before you start tracing for a single trace to show business objects and methods. Otherwise you include additional calls to the system monitor that are probably not needed. 
you may want to leave system monitor open if you're doing performance trouble shooting because that may be part of the performance issues and then don't forget to disable tracing when you're done or you may end up with large log files or numerous log files which then need to be later cleaned up so those are a few tips for using the tra tracing options so we've reviewed many options and a few examples of using the Epicor tracing logs in Epicor 10. I hope you've learned a few things using tracing options and how to save and review the files. Thank you for viewing this Lunch and Learn on tracing options.